Welcome to this video introducing Borrow. My name is Francis. I'm a PhD student from the University of New South Wales in Australia. And today I'm going to be discussing Borrow, which is an R package I recently developed for basic analysis of multivariate data in ecology. And so the aims of this video are to first introduce Borrow and explain what Borrow stands for. And then I'll discuss the three main types of models that Borrow is designed to fit. Independent column models, purely latent rubber models, and correlated column models. So Borrow stands for Bayesian Ordination Regression Analysis. Bayesian means we're going, to do, we're going to be doing Bayesian Markov Chain Monte Carlo, or MCMC estimation. And in particular, the estimation is done through JAGS. Now, JAGS is a very well-known program designed to do MCMC estimation of Bayesian Rackle models. It's got a very similar syntax to bugs or wind bugs or open bugs, which you may have heard of or used. But the estimation in Borrow is done through JAGS. Now, one of the main things that Borrow does is unconstrained ordination. And so you may have used techniques such as correspondence analysis or non-metric multidimensional scaling. These are what you would argue as being distance-based unconstrained ordination methods. Whereas Borrow implements a model-based approach to unconstrained ordination. And the details regarding this approach can be found in this paper here, which is available in Methods in Ecology and Evolution. Aside from ordination, Borrow also does regression, so if it's a generalized linear model or a GLM type model, linking the responses to one or more explanatory variables. Now, in fact, Borrow actually does more than this because it actually includes ways to try and account for any potential correlation between the responses. For example, correlation between species. And I'll talk a lot more about this approach later on in this video. And finally, because we are doing Bayesian estimation, then we do have the prostrate distribution. So prostrate means and medians, credible intervals, and all that jazz that is associated with Bayesian analysis. So the main type of data that I'm talking about in this video is multivariate abundance data or community composition data. This is whereby you've got a response matrix, i equals 1 to n sites, and j equals 1 to s species. And so the basic idea behind borrowing is that we've a GLM to each column of the response matrix, in this case to each species, plus stuff to account for potential correlation between the columns, between the species. And so the equation that's fitted in borrow is seen at the bottom of this slide. You have a link function which relates the mean to covariates. And so each column or each species will get its own intercept and regression coefficients. And there's some stuff there to um, account for potential correlation between the species. What types of responses can borrow handle? If you have binary data or presence absence data, you can try family equals binomial. If you have counts, you can try Poisson or negative binomial. Um, the negative binomial is particularly useful if you're modeling over dispersed counts. If you have continuous data, you can try family equals normal. If you have non-negative continuous data, you can try long normal or Tweedy. The Tweedy distribution, aside from having a very fancy name, is particularly useful if you're modeling something like terrestrial or marine biomass. And finally, if you are modeling ordinal data, you can try family equals ordinal, which does cumulative logit regression. Now, the first type of model that Borrow fits is independent column model. This is whereby we assume the column or the species are independent, and we fit a separate GLM to each one. And so to do this in Borrow, we can, for example, load the spider data set from the MVM1 package. And then we give it the response matrix Y, we give it the model matrix X, and in this case, we're going to be assuming Poisson counts. Now, because the estimation is MCMC and it's done through JAGS, it does take a bit of time to fit this model. Uh, I apologize for this in advance. Please feel free to go get a beverage of your choice, whether it's a tea or a coffee or beer or vodka or whatever. Uh, but in this case, because it is quite a small data set, then the fit should actually be done within less than a minute. And so once you've fitted this model, you can then apply summary to obtain parameter estimates and mod other model information. And so, for example, you obtain uh, the prostrate medians of the species-specific intercepts and the species-specific regression coefficients. If you want to do zero analysis, you can do use the plot function, and this will return a series of plots. And one of these plots is residuals versus linear predictors plot. And so in this plot here, we can see there is a very prominent fan shape, which is indicative of overdispersion. And so this suggests that you should perhaps try the negative binomial family instead. You can also obtain the HPD intervals, which are 95% credible intervals, and you can also obtain information criteria. Now, what I will say about this model is that you should take these results and do inference in general with this model with a fairly large grain of salt. And that's because of the fact that we are assuming this model that these species are independent. Now, this may not be a satisfactory assumption. And later on, when I get to model three, I'll talk about a way of trying to relax this assumption. Meanwhile, model two is a purely latent variable model. This is whereby we have no covariates and we just want to visualize the sites on a scatter plot. 
And so you can see that the Xi beta J is now replaced with Zi theta J, where Zi are the latent variables, and theta J are the column coefficients related to the latent variables. Now the latent variable Zi can be treated as ordination coordinates for each site or for each row in the response matrix. And the number of latent variables is equal to the number of ordination axes. And so if you fit a model with two latent variables, then after fitting the model, you can then plot the latent variables um, on a scatter plot and to look for any potential site patterns. You also have an optional row effect, which controls, for example, for site total abundance. And this ensures that the ordination is in terms of species composition. And so it's a model-based approach to row standardization. And the details regarding this model-based approach can be found in this, paper, uh, in this paper listed at the bottom of this slide. To fit this model in Borel, we now um, don't have an X because we have no covariates. We're going to assume negative binomial counts because we saw overdispersion in model 1. We have two lane variables, and I'm also going to include the row effect to control for site total abundance. After fitting this model, you can then apply the LV's plot function, which can then construct two ordination plots, one based on the prostrate medians, the other based on the prostrate means of latent variables. And these ordination plots you can interpret and compare to plots from CA or NMDS, for example. And so you can see in these ordination plots, you actually have three site clusters. Uh, with site 25 located at roughly in between the three clusters. And so that's a model-based approach to unconstrained ordination. Now, because it is a model-based approach, you have summary. You can use summary to obtain parameter estimates. You can use plot to do residual analysis. And if you want to check out what's available in the, in the uh, model fit, you can try the attributes function. Now, the third type of model, and arguably the most interesting type of model that model fits, is the correlated column model. This is whereby we assume these species are correlated and we try to account for this in the GLM framework. And so to do this, we actually combine models one and two. And so we have the Xi beta J as well as the Zi theta J. Now you may look at this and go, huh, what, you know, why am I including these latent variables? What do they actually do? Well, there are two ways to actually think about their inclusion. The first one is that there is a zero correlation between the species that is not due to covariates. Uh, for example, species interaction or correlation due to phylogeny. And the latent variables provide a method of trying to model or account for this residual correlation. The second way to think about it is that we have potentially missed out on some important covariates. And the latent variables, Zi, then provide a good guess or a good prediction of what these missing covariates are. And the theta j's will then be um, estimates of the coefficients that are related to these missing covariates. Either way, the latent variables act as a device for adding correlated uncertainty into the model to account for stuff which induces correlated errors. So things like species interaction, things like um, missing covariates, they induce interspecies correlated um, errors or interspecies correlation. And the latent variables are a method or a parsimonious approach of accounting for this uh, correlated uncertainty. Now, to fit this model in Borel, we can combine models one and two. So we have y, we have x, uh, negative binomial counts, two latent variables, and we also use save.model equals true. And what this does is that it saves the JAGS model file as a text file in the working directory, and it also saves the MTMT samples, which you may want to come back to later on uh, if, it, uh, if you want to do further inference. And so once you've fitted this model, you can then apply summary again, you can apply plot again. Um, you also have credible intervals, you also have information criteria, etc. Uh, what I will say about this model is that you can take the results from this model with a, with a smaller grain of salt because of the fact that uh, we are now accounting for the fact that species are correlated. And so the results obtained from this model should, in principle, uh, be more valid. I also recommend you guys check out the get.environ.core and the get.residual.core functions. These are functions designed to calculate pairwise correlations or pairwise species correlations between, uh, or sorry, due to um, environmental response and due to residual correlation, for example, species interaction. Uh, a couple of final things. If you want to extract your MTMT samples, then when you fit the model, please set save.model equals true, and then the MTMT samples will be available um, or can be quite straightforwardly extracted. Uh, regarding priors, Borel does use uninformative priors, so mean zero, sorry, normal distribution with mean zero and very large variances. Um, this can be changed using the high params argument. Regarding variable selection and hypothesis testing, a few salty information criteria are implemented, uh, but I also recommend you check out the ssvs.index argument. Now, ssvs stands for stochastic search variable selection. It's a Bayesian approach to variable selection and hypothesis testing using spike and slab prize. Um, so the ssvs thing can be applied on a coefficient, 
uh, on a group of coefficients or on a covariant. So please check out the help file and also Google stochastic search variable selection to find out more. And finally, um, as I mentioned before, because the estimation is MCMT estimation done through JAGS, then borrow can take a bit of time to fit your models. Um, I do apologize for this again. Uh, what I do recommend is that you guys watch out for the HMSC package, which is currently in production by uh, two of my colleagues, Otto and Guillaume, and they said that the HMSC package is designed to be borrow put on steroids. So it's designed to have sim similar functionality to borrow, um, except it's meant to do it much quicker. So keep an eye out for that. Now, Otso and Guillaume are two of a ragtag bunch of ecological statisticians thinking about cumulative level models. So there are some very big names here all around the world, um, and me, and we're all trying to think about ways of modeling multi-species data and trying to account for things like uh, species interactions, uh, missing covariates, etc. So that's it from me. Uh, thank you for watching this video. Borrow version 0.5 is available on CRAN. Please download it and use it if it's suitable for your data. And good luck with your data massaging.